100 women of impact it's such a pleasure to host you over here and um, thank you so much for taking this time thank you sarika we've known each other for a long time now and i watch with great pride your progress in your uh, corporate life i'm so happy to be here thank you purva you've been a great mentor and a friend and a philosopher and a guide for this but for others um, i would just like to share that apurva is a very very senior business leader with more than 3 decades of experience especially in the corporate world and her experience spans from different business but largely into the media space uh, she was the president of the jagran media group and now an entrepreneur in her own right where she is helping many many other women actually fulfill their aspirations and desires to be entrepreneurs it's a lovely brand azol which apurva has curated and launched with lot of love and dedication which is bringing some of the best delicacies of across india to our kitchens with a lot of purity transparency as well as i would say a lot of love from apurva herself thank you so much apurva so many people have appreciated azol and i know i am a big fan of that brand also with so much of my, the stuff now adorning my kitchen So um Apurva just wanted to start this um interview and we wanted to first ask you what was the scenario when you started your journey as a corporate woman um and do you think things have gotten better over the years Sarika as you already mentioned I started my journey 3 decades ago so it was the late late 80s early 90s and at that time there were not many women in 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 the corporate world of course there were a few well known women right at the top especially in the industry that i joined which was media advertising um, uh, and uh, the women at that time i thought they were fighters because they had to break so many glass ceilings they had to go where no woman had ventured uh, earlier so so i would classify them as warriors very few but warrior class women then i think we came and we were more the balancers we were trying to manage home and work and learning new ways of entering the corporate world watching these women less of fighters because they had already fought the battles for us but more of managers and balancers and today i think i see the young young women who are entering the work field and entering corporate world even relationships on their own terms and i think that's the transition that's a very very interesting perspective because when you put it in that way i look back around and say actually there were not, no ecosystem no policies yet a lot of the warrior clan had paved some path for us and we were still trying to keep the flag high but i would say that um, our clan has somewhat created the path for the younger generation where the policies and the ecosystem is far more enabling than what it was in our times and therefore a lot more work needs to be done even for the future generations but very very interesting perspective thank you uh, purva for that but how did you decide to enter the media industry because if i remember correctly your undergrad degree was in bsc physics so i am yet to understand a sciences student to a media industry how did that journey start well i did bsc physics you're right after that i did my mba from iim bangalore um, again 80s 90s either iit or iim were the two ways in which you sort of entered and you know found um uh, starry jobs at that time and i think in the in those two years that i did when when i was doing my management got exposed to a lot of different different subjects a lot of different um uh, industries did my summer training in advertising and realized that i had a this whole passion for brands and marketing and communication and uh, you know both the the creative part and and the science behind the creativity so for me media i found was a nice balance of the left brain and the right brain so you there is a huge amount of creativity but my personal philosophy sarika has been that unchanneled creativity does nothing you have to have a science behind the art only then it will flourish and succeed so well said actually this is truly connecting the dots that whole grounding and the logical approach and the scientific approach how we when as a science student and applying it to the creative world actually brings in a i would say a, an amazing combination uh, to come up with a superlative performance or a superlative output uh, in that way um, you know i have one more question in the sense 
um, we spoke about Azol. Um, could you share a little bit about, uh, you know, how did you come about that idea and uh, where the idea and motivation came from and where do you think your experience in the business world is now helping you to be an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur with heart? Because Azol, I can feel it is a brand with heart. So um, Azul really, we started with the intention of, uh, you know, looking at um, what's happening in the world around that. Uh, in, in that sense, Azul is a pandemic child because you realize that all of us have finally realized that health is most important. Uh, a, a, a healthy lifestyle is finally going to be uh, what will give us immunity against anything that hits us uh, later on. And uh, you realize that one of the big things that whether it is Ayurveda or whether it is the um, uh, nutritionists of today, everybody's telling you eat local, go back to your roots, eat seasonal, fresh, look around you, look around you in your region and your environment and see what, what is grown there and what is produced there because that's what suits our bodies the best. So one, one reason for launching and very critical reason for launching Azol was to reconnect consumers with, with their roots and present to them food grains and products and food products that are available in our country. And we have so much of such treasure trove of uh, regional foods. So we partner with self-help groups, farmers, women micro-entrepreneurs and bring their products to the urban audience. So that's really where Azul started. Currently, how many women, such women are actually associated with Azul, if I may ask you? We are currently working with 16 self-help groups who in turn employ bit, ranging between 20 to 200 women each in their wow. uh, villages and... Uh, wow. So you're talking and, about at least 1,000 plus women yes, being absolutely. impacted and creating economic opportunities for them. Now, that's something which I would say business with impact. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, learning. Um, also, while you've been, um, when you started Azol, uh, what were the experiences and skills which you had as a business leader, which you felt helped you to start this entrepreneurial journey? See, I became a leader uh, and a business head very early in life. I was 27 or 28 uh, when I started um, running a, a, a business and managing a P&L. And you know, they say that the 10,000 hour rule mm. become experienced and you become better when you have sp spent 10,000 hours practicing. So I've spent maybe 30,000, 40,000 hours practicing to be a, a, a business manager. And thus, the patterns of what it takes to run a profitable business, the patterns of what it takes to run a, 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 an organization and succeed in an organization. You have learned through various life stages of various businesses, how culture is important, how it is just not about strategy, but e more importantly about execution and implementation. How, if you want to, if you expect something, you have to monitor it. How communication uh, has to be done repeatedly and ceaselessly if you want to make an impact. How to manage people at the same time, keep their eyes focused on the output. The balancing that is required. I think all those patterns I've learned over 30 years and then the industry is, um, then it's irrespective of the industry, right? So you bring in those pa patterns of what helped you succeed in different businesses and you apply the same to a new business or a new entrepreneurship uh, that you're setting, uh, setting up. So in summary, it's really about the experiential learning that you're trying to put in place. Yeah, Prabhu, this is very interesting when you speak about experiential learning. Uh, many women uh, leaders out here are right now wanting to move up the ladder or they are trying to hold the positions of influence, I would say, and make more impact in the roles they are doing. What are the, say, top three skills or top three competencies, as we call it, you think are the most crucial for leaders? And I'm not specifically talking about male or women leaders, but for leaders to today being a little more relevant and impactful uh, given the situation that post-pandemic, the world has changed, the businesses uh, have changed. I think the first one really is the ability to simplify complexity. So I think a good leader today is one who's able to take all this complexity and uncertainty and simplify it in some, in a manner that the team understands. Simple, stupid. 
you know they say it's a yes. simple yes. word <laughs> yes absolutely 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 so i think the more you simplify and uh, i remember one somebody telling me that ma'am uh, what you said was um, uh, uh, very simple so i told him that to reach the simplicity is a journey. very complex journey it, it takes a lot of effort that's to so finally true. that's so true uh, the other thing i think is very 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 important how do you nurture team team members and i see a lot of leaders make this mistake where they end up so you know and i think to a large extent hr is also to blame because you're taught okay, okay let's look at what are the skills that are required in a person and let's work on his weaknesses i strongly believe that you should not work on people's weaknesses you should work on their strengths play to their strengths so how can we as leaders yes understand people have weaknesses but play to their strengths so true. nurture their strengths so they they excel in their uh, jobs the third thing and that is irrespective of season time and tide irrespective of um, uh, uh, situations that is something that i've always believed is a, a a talent that makes for a good leader and that is personal accountability where you take control of things around you whether it is good things happening around you whether it is bad things happening happening around you you turn around and say that this is my mess i will solve it apurva you were also a um, state level or was it a national level a state level hockey player uh, in your school days and um, and even in college actually uh, so do you feel that your training as a sports person has helped you to be a better leader um in the in the business world um and is there any analogies which you would like to keep that there is some kind of i always believe that there are some analogies from sports world to the business world anything you would like to share out there absolutely you, you know my husband says this and i so i really agree with him but in this this point i do agree with him where he says that sports is life in fast fast motion um and and and, and it is it, it is true what what happens in those 90 minutes or um uh, 20 over match or in a test match is really what happens over a longish period in your life too i think two things i personally found very useful or learnings which i i encourage everybody to think about that one gets out of sports and one is very clearly sports especially if you play team sports teaches you that you know you cannot do anything alone you need a team around you the second thing is i i think sports teaches you a lot of resilience it teaches you to quickly get up and run so you are playing a match and you are 30 down you don't have the time and you don't have the luxury to sort of um, sit and wallow in self pity or say oh my god analyze and super analyze and you know maybe i should you have to get up and run you have to get up and not allow your mind to say my god i'm losing mm -hmm. you have to say that no i can win i'm 30 down but i can win and that resilience that ability to get up and run despite failures and hard knocks is again a very valuable lesson from sports you know apurva i know this is an oft asked question um and uh, but i would still like to ask you you are one of the few women leaders who were started sitting on the boardrooms and maybe at times the only woman in the boardroom um as per you what are the kind of biases women still face in the boardrooms and how do you deal with it so whether it's a boardroom uh, sarika or whether it is society or whether it is sometimes in your own family i think our patriarchal system naturally ensures that there are biases playing out everywhere it's not necessary it's just at office it's not necessary just it's it's just there in our society and that translates back into our boardrooms and our uh, corporate offices how do you deal with them so i think i break up in my mind biases into two parts external biases and when there are external biases either you do a well left and say okay no let me not play this ball at all i mean how many fights shall i pick up and i will pick choose and pick up the battles i want but these are the two battles which are non negotiable you cannot disrespect me and for that i will keep fighting 
as far as the other part is concerned there are equally internal biases sarika all of us suffer from where we have this imposter inside us or we do have a lack of confidence or we believe we are not good enough or we are constantly looking at our weaknesses and not our strengths that is where i have spent all my time working at because that's the only thing in my control so all my effort in the last so many years has been to work in my on myself telling my inner voice like telling my cheerleader complimenting me it doesn't matter what you are, what the others think of me i know how good i am ensuring that it is irrel nobody's op opinion matters my boss's opinion doesn't matter my husband's opinion doesn't matter my kids's opinion doesn't matter nobody's opinion matters only my opinion about myself matters and that's a very hard one battle and that's what i tell people that this is the only thing in your control the inner biases you work on yourself the moment you have that inner core of strength you have that inner moral conviction about how how good you are increasingly external biases start mattering lesser and lesser and less thank you so much apurva i think we learned so much in this in short interview you know keep it simple value your team make yourself accountable Uh, don't let anybody walk on you because you have strong content and have that faith in you don't let your imposter syndrome say anything else and also keep prioritizing what you really want to do thank you so much apurva for this wonderful discussion and uh, we look forward to having you at the campus also soon to address our women students they are very excited and uh, we are hoping that uh, your travels will bring us uh, bring you to chandigarh and also help the women students at raksha also grow and learn from you thank you so much thank you thank you sarika thank you for inviting me thank you